Hello, and welcome to Aggregate, an open source Python package for solving actuarial problems with aggregate probability distributions. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about distortion functions and spectral risk measures. This is going to be the first of four short videos covering those topics. And we're going to begin by talking about a simple binary risk and how a distortion function is a way to represent the price of that. I should mention here, uh, I've got a couple of QR codes that you can scan. The one on the left takes you to the documentation. The one on the right takes you to the source code. So if you're using your phone, you can get to those. So let's begin, uh, as usual, by uh, importing from the aggregate library build and uh, QD. And then I also want to import from the extensions uh, sub-library. Uh, there's some figures in there which we'll look at. Uh, figures is uh, just general. Um, diagrams and PIR figures are the exhibits out of the book. Uh, for this to work, you need uh, version 0.11.6 installed. So let's begin uh, by thinking about the pricing of a simple uh, binary risk. And I want to um, keep this sort of abstract and talk about a general security rather than an insurance contract in particular. Um, and the, con the characteristics of a financial security are that they will involve some contractually agreed contingent cash flows, just as an insurance policy does. But I want to talk about it more generically so we avoid giving uh, terms like premiums and losses to the cash flows. We just keep them uh, abstract. And the contract I want to consider is a made-up contract, it's somewhat realistic in some ways, and that is the Central Park weather contract. I'm going to call it C28, and it's going to pay one unit, one dollar, euro, pound, uh, if the high temperature recorded on June the 1st of this year is greater than 28 degrees uh, Celsius. Um, if you look up, the normal range for June the 1st is between 20 degrees and 28 degrees. The average is about 24 degrees, and 28 degrees C is about uh, the 90th percentile. So I'd imagine that we've got uh, some organization ready, and um, there's a team of underwriters uh, ready to quote this policy. Uh, so they're going to look and they're going to see, uh, okay, so if 28 degrees is about the 90th percentile, there's about a 10% chance um, that the contract will pay. So the loss cost, because this is a 0-1 um, contract, the loss cost on it will be about 10% or a 10 cent uh, rate. Um, and notice uh, this is a realistic. I haven't used the toss of a coin or, or roll of a dice type example. Um, because there you do know what the probabilities are. Here we, we actually don't know what these probabilities are, and we could be worried about the accuracy of, of our estimates. So in that sense, this is, is like a, a, a true insurance uh, kind of situation. So let's Im imagine that you know, there's a market for this, and the market rate comes out at, let's say, uh, 30 cents. Um, so from that, we've got a... Uh, and, and then also I want to envisage that this contract is a fully collateralized contract. So... When you write this contract, there's no risk sharing going on here. It's a bilateral contract between you and the issuer. There's a dollar uh, put into escrow. Uh, if the temperature is above 28, you get it. Otherwise, uh, you get um, nothing. This is the buyer of the, of the contract. Um, so we can compute all our usual uh, statistics. We've got the expected loss. We've got the, uh, the premium. Uh, the margin is going to be the difference between the two. Um, the amount of capital is going to be one minus the premium um, because those are our only sources of, of funds. We could compute loss ratios, leverages, and returns uh, on capital. And you're going to see that the margin is, is 20 cents, so 30 minus 10. The loss ratio is going to be 10 over um, uh, 30, so 33%, so a pretty low loss ratio. Um, the capital is going to be 0.7, so the return is going to be uh, the margin 2 uh, 20 cents over 70 cents for about 28% return. So you see uh, quite a high margin, but a sort of moderate uh, return because the leverage is so low. And we, we often uh, see that in, uh, in contracts. And uh, we also notice here that the 30 cents uh, is the ask price. So if someone comes to you and asks for a quote, that's what you say. You say, I'm, I'm quoting uh, 30 cents on this uh, because you potentially worried about adverse selection you're worried about maybe a counterparty with a better model than you that you sort of you know has a, has a firmer understanding of what the true loss cost is and so you there's a degree of uh, conservatism in that now we could envisage here a range of these types of contracts across different uh, strikes so the strike is going to be the 28 degree uh, trigger point 
Um, and as a result, we're going to get a, a range of contracts with different probabilities of, of attaching. And we could therefore envisage a, uh, a graph that would sort of be our quote book, uh, where along the x-axis, we'd have the different probabilities that the different uh, contracts attach, or our model estimate of that. And on the y-axis, um, we would have the price that we would quote. And it might look uh, something like this. So this is a uh, an example um, using what's called the proportional hazard uh, transform. So the orange line here is uh, the graph of S to the alpha, where alpha is 0.523. And I selected that so that it, if I put in uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.1 to the power 523 is 0.3. So it's going to rep replicate the pricing um, that we've just uh, discussed. And remember, so along the x-axis here, we've got probability of loss. So it doesn't directly map to the contracts, you have to um, estimate what you think the probability of loss is, but you know, your contracts at different strikes are going to map into different points on this x-axis, and then we've got the price of the contract up the y-axis. Now from here, uh, I want to show you, uh, this is uh, figure 10.3, so this is one of the things that we imported uh, up here from uh, extensions PIR figures, and uh, this is figure 10.3 from the Pricing Insurance Risk book. Uh, so we've got the same um, distortion on the left-hand side here. Uh, the blue line is just the line y equals x. So that's giving us the loss cost. So at, at uh, 0.1 probability of, of payment, uh, it's giving us the loss cost 0, 0 0.1, 10 cents. Uh, the chart on the right just sort of fills in some of the details that we've got. Uh, so we've mentioned we've got the loss cost. G of S here is 0.3 is the premium. So the margin is 0.2. And then it's a fully collateralized layer, so we need $1 of total assets, so we've got $0.70 cents, uh, of capital uh, going in there. And you can see, obviously, again, we can compute loss ratio, leverage, return on capital from these uh, pieces of information. And then finally, um, we could ask, well, what properties should our orange quote line have? Is it, are we free to draw any line we want uh, here, or are there some requirements uh, on, the, on the line? And the answer is that if you want a set of quotes that are sort of, you're not going to be able to be arbitraged against, so you want a set that are going to produce a reasonable uh, array of um, prices that you can quote across these contracts without being worried about someone arbitraging uh, your pricing, there's certain requirements that you're going to want your pricing curve to have. And they have, firstly, you're going to want it to pass through 0, 0, and it's going to want to pass through 1, 1, because 0, 0, um, well, if, if we're talking here, uh, the, if the probability of a loss is zero, and, and I don't mean the modeled probability of a loss is zero, I mean the actual probability of a loss is zero, uh, no one's ever going to pay anything for that because you're saying it's, it's impossible. Um, so that would be zero. And at the other end, if, if you always pay one, that's just you owe a dollar for search, sure, that's just worth a dollar, right? So it goes through, through either end there. Um, we want the function to be increasing because we want... Um, a higher probability of loss to correspond to a higher premium. Otherwise, if, if it decreased, you could come up uh, with, with a, an arbitrage uh, opportunity there between the contracts. And then we also want it to be concave. So we want it to be bowed down like this. Uh, and we want that so that um, the prices that we have are sub-additive. And these last two properties were shown by a, a paper written by Asabi in the early 2000s that if you either don't have monotone, I'm sorry, if you don't, if it's if G is not increasing or not concave, you can construct examples where the uh, corresponding uh, prices don't have the monotone property and don't have the sub additive property, which is very undesirable. So that's uh, all I want to cover in, in this video. We've we've introduced this uh, idea of a, a distortion function, this this orange line as the price of a simple zero one contract where the x-axis here is giving us the probability of a loss and the loss cost and um, the value is the uh, indicated price that we would charge for that contract.